Hello and welcome back to Immortal News. Today on August 11th, we gather to honor the legacies of 13 legends we've sadly lost today and in recent times. While their departures have left a void in the entertainment industry, their contributions remain etched in our memories. Beyond just recounting their tales, we'll also be paying special tributes, highlighting the indelible marks they've left behind. Dive into the indomitable spirit of Duran Duran's Andy Taylor as he confronts stage 4 prostate cancer, and wade through the perplexing Instagram episode involving young rapper Lil Tay. If you could spare a moment to hit the like button, we would greatly appreciate it. Now let's embark on this journey of remembrance and revelation, showcasing the multifaceted dimensions of fame and legacy. Number 13. John Fay, a chronicle of endless love and commitment to Cincinnati. Reds. John Fay, the widely respected Reds beat writer for The Inquirer, passed away on Thursday, believed to have suffered a heart attack. He was 66. For over three decades, John's commitment to covering the Cincinnati Reds was unparalleled. However, the most defining aspect of his life was his undying love for his wife, Laura, who he lost to cancer in January. Their love story, which began when they were neighbors on Cincinnati's west side, was one of unwavering dedication and a partnership that was truly inspirational. John's career took him on the road for months, yet his love for Laura remained at the center of his universe. He balanced his dream job with being an unwavering pillar of support for Laura, especially during her battle with cancer. Even during his own health challenges, John's priority was always Laura's well-being. His dedication was such that even in her absence, he continued to honor her memory, notably with the establishment of a scholarship in her name. Remembered by colleagues as a humble, grounded, and skilled storyteller, John's calm demeanor and reassuring presence were a testament to his character. He was not only a beacon in the world of sports journalism, but also an emblem of everlasting love. Tribute to John Fay. Number 12. Patricia Bragg, the vanguard of health foods and pioneer in wellness. Patricia Bragg, an unparalleled figure in the realm of health foods and notably celebrated for introducing apple cider vinegar to the mainstream, passed away at the age of 94 on August 10. As the spirited ambassador for a healthier lifestyle, she played a pivotal role in steering popular culture towards nutritional consciousness. Having helmed Bragg Live Food Products as its CEO for nearly half a century, Patricia's leadership transformed a venture founded by Paul Bragg in 1912 into a household name. Despite the complexities of her personal relationships with the Braggs, her professional dedication to the company was unwavering. When Patricia took charge of the enterprise 65 years ago, little did anyone anticipate the health food revolution she would spearhead. Over the years, luminaries like Katy Perry, Orlando Bloom and Hayden Slater recognized the vision and potential of Bragg's products, becoming significant stakeholders. Under Patricia's stewardship, the company not only championed apple cider vinegar, but diversified into products like liquid amino acids, olive oils, vinaigrettes, and even delved into books and merchandise. In 2019, after the acquisition of Bragg Live Food Products, she established the Patricia and Paul Bragg Foundation, a testament to her enduring dedication to well-being and her aspiration to drive societal change. The foundation stands as a beacon of hope and inspiration, funding nonprofits that echo the mission Patricia and Paul staunchly believed in. Throughout her life, Patricia was not only a businesswoman but a passionate advocate for health. She traveled extensively, delivering speeches that emphasized the significance of a balanced lifestyle. As her website quotes, what you sow in one period of your life, you reap in another. Indeed, the seeds of wellness she planted continue to benefit millions. Tribute to Patricia Bragg. Number 11. Doreen Mantle, a beacon of British comedy and versatile performer Doreen Mantle, celebrated for her enduring role as Jean Warboys in the BBC's classic comedy One Foot in the Grave, has passed away peacefully at home at the age of 97 on August 9th. This announcement comes with a profound sense of loss from her agent, 
and the broader artistic community. Mantle's career was a tapestry of varied roles that extended beyond the comedic sphere. While Jean Warboys remains one of her most iconic roles, she also showcased her versatility in the detective series Father Brown and took to the streets of the ITV soap Coronation Street as Joy Fishwick. The vast breadth of her talent is evident in her film and television credits, spanning from My Family and Jonathan Creek to the film Yentl. A noteworthy highlight of her career on stage was her applauded role in Death of a Salesman at the National Theatre, earning her an Olivier Award in 1979 for Best Actress in a Supporting Role. The recent One Foot in the Grave, 30 Years of Laughs, saw her reminiscing about iconic moments with co-stars, encapsulating her passion for the craft. Mantle's legacy is further enriched by her stage performances in 84 Charing Cross Road, the comedy Billy Liar, and her poignant one-woman show My Truth and Reconciliation. She leaves behind two sons, four grandchildren and a brother, but her influence will forever resonate in British performing arts. Tribute to Doreen Mantle. Number 10, Bryce Marden, a beacon of abstract artistry. Bryce Marden, a visionary in the realm of abstract art, passed away at the age of 84 on August 9th, leaving an indelible mark on the world of modern painting. His demise was announced by his daughter Mirabelle Marden, who stated that the New York-based artist continued to paint until just days before his passing. Diving deep into abstraction, Marden's commitment was unwavering. When the world questioned the very essence of painting, he sought its reinvention, challenging conventions and leading the way. His early monochromatic works exhibited at New York's Bikert Gallery in 1966 showcased muted tones, reflecting gravity and labor. But his artistry evolved, eventually manifesting in intricate swirls, reminiscent of Eastern calligraphy, capturing the essence of landscapes and distilling them into abstract impressions. Critics like Roberta Smith regarded Martin as a torchbearer, likening his influence to that of Giorgio Morandi in Radical Abstraction. Inheriting the challenges posed by predecessors like Jasper Johns and Robert Rauschenberg, Martin paid homage, continually exploring the depths of abstraction and reality. Born on October 15, 1938, in Bronxville, New York, Martin's academic pursuits led him to the Boston University School of Fine and Applied Arts and later the Yale School of Art. His camaraderie with stalwarts like Chuck Close and Richard Serra, and his retrospective at the Museum of Modern Art in 2006, are but glimpses of his illustrious journey. When a painting truly came to life for Martin, it signaled completion, a testament to his profound connection with his art. Tribute to Bryce Martin, Number 9. Sean Dawkins, a football luminary and beacon of achievement. Sean Dawkins, the renowned NFL player celebrated for his remarkable nine-season tenure in the league, has tragically passed away at the age of 52 on August 9th. The specific cause remains undisclosed. Dawkins, a Red Bank, New Jersey native, rose to prominence during his collegiate years at the University of California, Berkeley. In the 90s, he cemented himself as a standout leading the nation in 1992 with 14 receiving touchdowns and accumulating 1,070 yards on 65 receptions. His extraordinary achievements at Cal, including an impressive 31 receiving touchdowns over three seasons, a record that still stands, garnered him induction into the Cal Athletics Hall of Fame in 2005. Drafted in the first round in 1993, Dawkins showcased his exceptional skill with teams including the Colts, Saints, Seahawks, and Jaguars. His memorable performance in the 1995 wildcard game, securing a 42-yard touchdown pass, remains iconic. NBA legend Jason Kidd expressed his sorrow, describing Dawkins as a true legend, and highlighting the joy and inspiration he brought to many. 
Dawkins' last NFL seasons were with the Jaguars, and although he signed with the Vikings in 2002, his stint was short-lived. His legacy, however, remains unshaken, a testament to his unparalleled talent and impact on the game. Tribute to Sean Dawkins. Number 8. Alec Jackson, a football luminary with a lasting legacy. Alec Jackson, the prodigious English footballer famed for his exceptional skills as a winger and inside forward, passed away on August 10th at the age of 86. Jackson's story is one of passion, dedication, and unyielding commitment to the sport he loved. Alec's journey with football began in earnest when he joined West Bromwich Albion as an amateur in 1954. Demonstrating his innate talent early on, he swiftly turned professional in the same year. Making his mark at a young age, he became the youngest player to score a league goal for Albion during his debut match against Charlton Athletic in November 1954. With a career spanning a decade at the first division club, even though no more trophies were added during his tenure, Alec's contributions to the team were undeniable. His record at Albion boasts an impressive 52 goals in 208 appearances. The year 1964 saw Jackson move to Birmingham City. Here he was part of the team when it faced relegation from the first division in 1965. Undeterred, he remained with the club for two more seasons before signing with Walsall in 1967 for a year. Alec Jackson's life is a testament to the adage that passion knows no bounds. Whether on the football pitch or in the car factory, he approached everything with unmatched zeal. His contributions to football will be remembered and cherished by fans and fellow players alike. Tribute to Alec Jackson. Number 7. Rosemary Pooler, a pillar of justice and advocate for civil rights. Rosemary Pooler, the esteemed judge of the Second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals and a distinguished member of its liberal bloc, passed away at the age of 85 on August 10th. Her peaceful departure in sleep was confirmed by the court's circuit executive, Michael Jordan. Pooler continued her active service on the bench, even after assuming senior status in the Second Circuit known for frequently adjudicating significant securities litigations and civil rights cases. Born on June 21, 1938 in New York City, Pooler showcased her legal acumen by graduating from the University of Michigan Law School in 1965. From private practice in Syracuse to leading roles in public service, her commitment to justice was unwavering. Her dedication saw her head the New York State Consumer Protection Board and serve on the State Public Service Commission. In 1994, her brilliance caught the attention of former Democratic President Bill Clinton, leading to her appointment as a federal judge in the Northern District of New York. By 1998, she ascended to a seat on the influential Second Circuit. Pooler's legacy includes significant rulings, including her poignant dissent on immigration-related matters and her unyielding stand for the protection of abortion providers and patients. With her departure, the legal community loses a beacon of justice, fairness, and civil rights. Tribute to Rosemary Pooler. Number 6. Mike Santiago, a trailblazing football coach and pillar of excellence. Mike Santiago, a formidable presence in American football coaching and the pioneering head coach for the UIW football program, tragically passed away at the age of 67 on August 10th. Born on October 1, 1955, Santiago's impressive career spanned collegiate and high school football, leaving behind an unmatched legacy of dedication, passion, and achievement. Santiago's journey began at Lamar in 1978 as an assistant coach. His unwavering commitment led him through distinguished stints at institutions such as North Carolina State, Northern Arizona, and Western Michigan. 
His prowess shone brightly as the head coach at Stephen F. Austin State University, leading the Lumberjacks to a commendable 39-27 overall score. However, his appointment as the first-ever head coach for UIW in May 2007 remains one of the most defining moments of his career. Santiago's return to the sidelines as the head coach at San Antonio Central Catholic High School in 2017 proved his undying love for the game. Deeply respected and admired, Santiago's departure leaves an irreplaceable void in the world of football. Central Catholic President Jason Longoria's tribute echoed the sentiments of many, underscoring Santiago's profound impact on players in the game. Tribute to Mike Santiago. Number 5. Lee Verstraet, a Maple Leaf Forever Lee Verstraet, former goaltender who briefly graced the ice for the Maple Leafs in the 1980s, passed away at the age of 61 on August 8. Although his tenure with the Leafs spanned just eight games, his commitment to the sport was evident throughout his professional journey. Drafted in the 10th round of the 1982 NHL Draft by the Maple Leafs, Verstraeta showcased his goaltending prowess with both determination and finesse. After his stint with the Leafs, Lee extended his professional career in the American Hockey League, dedicating over six seasons to the game. The NHL Alumni Association took to Twitter, expressing their sorrow upon hearing of his passing and paying tribute to his contributions to the sport. Even though his time on the NHL stage was brief, Verstraeta's passion for the game and his dedication to his team left an indelible mark on his teammates, opponents, and fans alike. Every player, whether they play one game or a thousand, contributes to the tapestry of a team's history. Lee Verstraeta's spirit will always remain a part of the Toronto Maple Leafs legacy. Tribute to Lee Verstraeta. Number 4. Julio Capote, a titan of telenovelas and beacon for global television, Julio Capote, the Cuban acting giant, renowned for his pioneering roles in legendary telenovelas of the 70s and 80s such as La Usurpadora and La Doña, passed away on August 8 at the age of 90. His family shared the heartrending news, a sentiment echoed by Venezuelan broadcaster, columnist and producer Alberto Chimino. Affectionately known as Papa Julio, in the artistic circle, Capote began his illustrious career in his native Cuba before captivating Venezuelan television with his debut in the hit telenovela Maria Merz La Chinita, led by Lila Murillo. His success saw him grace screens in esteemed series like La Passionaria, Lucesida, Topazio and Leonela, with more recent contributions at the turn of the millennium in shows such as Secreto de Amor and Sonar No Cuesta Nada. Capote's latter years were spent in serene retirement in Florida, surrounded by loved ones. A versatile performer in radio, theater, cinema, and television, he shared 63 joyous years of marriage with Leila Abdel de Capote, fathering two daughters, Marita and Tatiana. As the acting world mourns this legend, his fans, spanning several decades, Remember the indelible characters he brought to life on the small screen. Tribute to Julio Capote. Number 3. Aita Ever, Grand Old Lady of Estonian Theatre. Aita Ever, esteemed as the Grand Old Lady of Estonian Theatre, passed away on August 9 at the age of 92. Born Ilse Ever on April 1, 1931, she launched her illustrious career in 1953, mesmerizing audiences as a stage actress. Over the decades, her enchanting performances transcended boundaries as she appeared in a plethora of Estonian and Russian film productions. A testament to her versatility, in 1983, Ever brilliantly portrayed Miss Marple in the Russian adaptation Secret of the Blackbirds, 
based on Agatha Christie's A Pocket Full of Rye. Her artistic prowess shone through her varied roles in stage and film productions, spanning works of literary legends from Oscar Lutz and A. H. Tamsare to global luminaries like William Shakespeare and Anton Chekhov. On a personal front, Aita was once married to the iconic Estonian actor Eino Baskin, and their artistic legacy continues through their son, the accomplished director and actor Roman Baskin. Ita's legacy will forever resonate in the annals of Estonian theater and cinema, and her absence will be deeply felt by the entire artistic community. Tribute to Ida Ever. Breaking News Amid the electric vibes of Duran Duran's timeless tracks, former band member Andy Taylor, 62 years old, has shared his poignant battle against the shadows of stage 4 prostate cancer. Speaking candidly on BBC Breakfast with hosts Naga Munchetti and Charlie State, Taylor revealed his relentless spirit, I don't want to be a patient stuck here, I want to be a working patient. True to his words, despite the debilitating nature of the disease, Taylor confirmed he's releasing a new album on September 8th. His commitment to his craft, even in the face of adversity, is commendable, and his journey of hope and resilience is sure to inspire many. This rock legend story reminds us that even in the face of the darkest challenges, creativity can shine bright. Lil Tay, Rising Star's Instagram death drama sparks confusion. In a shocking twist, Lil Tay, the rapper and social media sensation who skyrocketed to fame at just nine years old for her ostentatious displays of wealth, has confirmed that she and her brother are very much alive. Earlier this week, a statement from Lil Tay's Instagram account, appearing to be from her family, announced their tragic deaths, leading to a flurry of concern and grief among her 3.4 million followers. The 14-year-old rapper, however, claims that her account was breached and used to disseminate jarring misinformation regarding her and her sibling. It's been a traumatizing 24 hours, all while trying to sort out this mess, she revealed in a statement to TMZ. Correcting false information, she clarified, my legal name is Tay Tian, not Claire Hope. Christopher Hope, her father, remained reticent when asked for confirmation. Harry Tsang, Lil Tay's former manager, echoed the need for cautious consideration. As of now, no official agencies have information on any investigation involving her alleged death. This bewildering episode underscores the challenges and perils of life in the digital age, particularly for young celebrities. Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 2. Sumner Redstone, the media titan who proclaimed, Content is King Sumner Redstone, the indomitable media magnate behind the monumental conglomerate Viacom Cibes, passed away at 97 on August 11, 2020. His life's journey began with a modest New England drive-in theater and culminated in a sprawling media empire that touched virtually every facet of the entertainment industry. Beyond just business, he became synonymous with the powerful declaration, Content is King. Sherry Redstone, Viacom CBS chair, and his daughter, reflecting on her father's legacy, remarked, my father led an extraordinary life that not only shaped entertainment as we know it today, but created an incredible family legacy. Through it all, we shared a great love for one another. I am so proud to be his daughter, and I will miss him always. His passing occurred at his Beverly Park mansion, with no specific cause of death noted. From deciphering Japanese codes in World War II to surviving a near-fatal hotel blaze in 1979, Redstone's tenacity was evident. He's best remembered for his fierce legal battles, notably acquiring Viacom in 1987 and Paramount in 1994. The Harvard-trained lawyer was unafraid to challenge the status quo, fighting against the Hollywood studio's dominance on film distribution and contesting cable TV monopolies. Redstone's reign bore resemblance to media magnate William Randolph Hearst, a fearless leader who governed with unequivocal authority. Redstone's actions, 
from parting ways with Tom Cruise in 2006 over controversial behaviors to reconciling six years later, demonstrated his unpredictable nature. Redstone and his family held significant sway over Viacom and CBS through their ownership in national amusements. Even in his later years, he remained a formidable presence, evidenced by his legal face-offs with Philippe Dahlman and former confidants. Tribute to Sumner Redstone Number 1. Trini Lopez, the voice that bridged folk and Latin rhythms. Trini Lopez, the iconic singer of the 1960s who immortalized hits such as If I Had a Hammer and This Land is Your Land, sadly passed away due to complications from coronavirus at the age of 83 on August 11, 2020. His demise took place at the Desert Regional Medical Center in Palm Springs, California. Born Trinidad Lopez III to Mexican parents in Dallas, his musical voyage was ignited by a $12 Gibson guitar from his father. The journey saw milestones such as collaborations with Buddy Holly, a transformative contract with Frank Sinatra's reprise label, and opening for legends like the Beatles in Paris. With a sound that beautifully melded folk and Latin, Lopez was nominated for Best New Artist at the Grammys in 1963. Beyond singing, his legacy was engraved in Gibson's creation of a dedicated Trini Lopez guitar model. This multifaceted artist performed consistently until 1981 and left his mark in various television and movie soundtracks, including Apollo 13. Lopez, who never married and had no children, recently collaborated on a song for a COVID-19 fundraiser, symbolizing his lifelong commitment to music and humanity. Tribute to Trini Lopez. Thank you for joining us today. As we end this segment, we encourage you to watch our special tribute video, honoring the stars we tragically lost in July. It's a testament to their incredible talents and indelible impacts. Their contributions have forever shaped the world, and though they are no longer with us, their legacy will shine brightly in the hearts of many. Tune in and celebrate the life and work of these unforgettable personalities. Their stories remind us of the power of resilience and the beauty of passion. Thank you and stay strong.